Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Iran has denied that it was involved in the drone attack which killed three U.S. troops and injured 34 on a U.S. base in Jordan near the Syrian border. American troops were still in their sleeping quarters when the drone struck with little to no warning. The drone arrived at the same time that a U.S. drone was returning and as a result elements of the air defense system were turned off. U.S. President Joe Biden said the attack had been carried out by Iranian-backed militant groups operating in Syria and Iraq. More countries have halted funding to the largest UN agency operating in Gaza as the crisis deepens over the alleged role of some staff in the 7th of October Hamas attacks on Israel. <laughs> Japan and Austria said they were suspending payments to the UN agency for Palestinian refugees, UNRWA. The US, UK, Germany and Italy are also among those who have suspended funding. UNRWA says it is extremely desperate and that the humanitarian needs in Gaza are growing by the hour. The agency has sacked several of its staff over allegations they were involved on the 7th of October attacks when Hamas gunmen infiltrated Israel, killing around 1,300 people. We were extremely shocked that certain number of countries have decided to suspend its aid or their aid for the UNRWA. The countries that have announced this suspension, their Aid amounts to 70% of the annual budget of the United Nations Relief and Work Agency. This measure is extremely dangerous and it is our hope that it will be reversed. The debt-laden Chinese property giant Evergrande has been ordered to liquidate by a court in Hong Kong. <laughs> Judge Linda Chan said enough is enough after the troubled developer repeatedly failed to come up with a plan to restructure its debts. The firm has been the poster child of China's real estate crisis with more than $300 billion of debt. When Evergrande defaulted two years ago, it sent shockwaves through global financial markets. Evergrande's executive director described the decision as regrettable, but said the company would continue to operate in mainland China. Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso have announced they are leaving the Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS. The junta-led countries had already been suspended from the bloc, which has been urging them to return to democratic rule. The three governments said it was a sovereign decision to withdraw from ECOWAS. In a joint statement that was read out on state broadcasters in the three countries, they said ECOWAS had drifted from the ideals of its founding fathers and the spirit of pan-African. More than 100 firefighters are battling to control a forest fire in Chibut province in southern Argentina. The blaze broke out at the Los Alaceres National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in northern Patagonia, which is home to huge Alerce trees. Chibut governor Ignacio Torres blamed arsonists for the fire, which has burned more than 1,000 hectares. Animal rights activists have protested against the return of bullfighting to Mexico City after almost two years. Asesinos! Asesinos! A judge had ordered the indefinite suspension of the practice, which dates back to the 16th century in Mexico, agreeing with animal rights activists who had filed a suit. The Supreme Court revoked the decision last month, but a legal battle between supporters and opponents is likely. Local media reported that the judges ruled only on technical aspects and have yet to decide on the case's merits. And Japan's moon lander has resumed operations after being shut down for a week due to a power supply issue. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency said it re-established contact with the lander, indicating that the glitch had been fixed. The agency said its solar cells are working again after a shift in lighting conditions allowed it to catch sunlight. With the smart lander for investigating moon spacecraft, Japan became only the fifth country to achieve a soft touchdown on the moon. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos.